So when value exceeds price, buyers give you money. Let's get right into it, okay? So when people ask you, when they ask you, how much does this thing cost? How much does this thing cost? How much does this logo cost? How much does this website cost? How much does it cost to run a social marketing campaign for my company? How much? Well, when they say cost, what they really mean is price. And I did a little research. There is such a thing, and if you type on the internet, on Google or wherever, you can type in, what is the difference between cost, price, and value, and you're gonna find very different things. But I'm gonna save you some of the trouble. I've done the work for you, I've looked it up, I've distilled the information down to a smaller bite-sized piece so that you guys can understand the difference between these three words. Let's get into it. So cost. Cost is defined as measured in time, effort for many of you guys, and materials. Cost is the amount incurred on the inputs, basically the raw materials, the salaries, rent, interest, taxes, duties, et cetera, whatever it costs you to make for producing any product or service, okay? It is the amount of money spent by the company, the company is you, in the manufacturing of a product or creation of a service. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. so if you were only to charge your clients what it costs, the best you could hope for is to break even. When you're billing hourly, you are basically giving them the cost, the cost of your time. But you're not accounting for things like if you're using your own laptop, your Creative Cloud subscription, your, your desk, the rent that you're paying uh, to be able to do the work. There's a lot of things that you're leaving off the table. When I was younger, I think I was uh, 16 or 17 years old, I started a design firm making t-shirts. I was working at a silk screening company and I wanted to sell my services to people. What I didn't account for back then, and if you're a young person not familiar with the way the business works here, is I basically charged people what it cost me to make, thinking that I actually had profit. And quickly, after a couple of transactions, thinking I should have money in my checking account, I came to realize I was running at near break even or I was actually even losing money. So when you guys charge people what it is, what it costs you to make, you're going to go bankrupt pretty soon. You're gonna go out of business because it doesn't account for any mistakes. It doesn't account for when your clients change their mind about something. It doesn't account for delays. It doesn't account for any mishaps or um, things that you didn't uh, plan for, okay? Now, when they ask you for your costs, what they really mean is, what is the price to do this thing with you? And so now we enter a new concept, which is called profit. So price is what it costs you to make, plus profit. Many people think the value of something is what the labor it takes to make it. So if it takes 100 hours for me to make something and I'm a dollar an hour, it should be $100. But that does not account for profit. Now, where does profit come from? When a client asks, what will this cost? They're asking, what is the price of doing this? And so we feel a little sheepish to talk about profit in front of them, but it, it is implied. Profit is implied. Okay, so what is the rule? Okay, how much profit should you include? There is no easy answer to this, but let's put it into here, okay? Let's put it into this equation here. So let's assume, what's a reasonable profit amount to add? What have you heard on the street? 15%. 15%. 20%. 20%, okay. So we're gonna call this profit here. And we're gonna say it's 25% of this pie. And this area here, we're gonna call cost. Okay, I'll do this in red because people usually associate red with like bad things. That's basically what it costs you. now. You may have heard me say this before that in some instances, I may mark up a project 300%, 400%. I can charge in excess, in multitudes, in, in orders of magnitude more than what it costs me to make. So this range can actually be as little as five or 10%, which some businesses survive on that little profit margin. And some businesses can be as much as, well, I don't know, let's do the inversion of this. Let's try this where it's like that much, okay? Where this piece of the pie now, where that is the profit. So I'm gonna say this is 80% profit now. The range can be quite drastic. It could be very dramatic. So it could be anywhere between 5% and say 80%. Even more sometimes, you know, depending on the business. Mm -hmm. Now, usually what happens here, and one big factor that 
determines the amount of profit is risk. Risk, okay? And, and Peter Drucker, the famous Peter Drucker said that all in business, all profit comes from risk. Who is taking the risk? If you were doing hourly billing, who's taking the risk, you or the client? Who's taking the, the risk? The, the client. The client is taking the risk uh, because you have no risk. If right. you work 40 hours, you get paid 40 hours. If you work five, you get paid five. So at some point in your work career, the client may say, you know what? I'm taking all the risks because you've put in 2000 hours and I'm not getting anything. I actually want you to give me an estimate on what it's going to take, how much it's, they're gonna say cost, but what they really mean is price. What's the price for you to do this? Cause I want one fixed fee. So then you enter into this world and you have to start to figure this thing out. Now, without knowing all the ways that this job can go wrong, you have to assume risk. What if the client changes their mind? What if they don't like this work? What if midway through some other stakeholder comes in and changes things? What if there's things that you don't know anything about, the unknown unknowns that come into play? So then you add more profit. You add, you increase the price to accommodate the amount of risk that you're taking. So far we've talked about cost. Now we've talked about price, but what about this thing called value? The value thing, everybody needs to know about value and value is subjective. It's dependent on the buyer to determine value. Most of us think it's up to us, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. If I wanted to sell you my watch, if I wanted to sell you this hat, who gets to determine the value? Who gets to determine the price? The buyer. Okay, so let's go one at a time. Who determines price? The buyer, the buyer, or the seller? Mm. This is important. Who gets to determine price? The seller. And why do you say that? Because they're the first touch point. They're the person that has to. They're the person that has to put it on. They have to sell it. If there's no price That's on That's not something. a great explanation. You're, you're right, oh, by the way. Yikes. You're right. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, you're right. Don't guess the other way. Now, people don't understand this, but the, the seller, I make a good. I get to determine the price. Right. If I price it too low, I might sell a lot, but my margins are going to be really thin. If I price it really high, I might not sell a lot, but my profit margin is going to be really big. And we, we've talked about this in the last episode on pricing, right? That sometimes to sell more product, you actually have to increase the price. So the buyer, I'm sorry, the seller gets to determine the price. Now who gets to determine value? I know this one. You do? Yeah. What is it? It's the buyer. The buyer. And why do you say that? Can you give us another in-depth answer like before? Yes, because I don't have to buy um, what the seller, if they say a price, I don't have to buy at that price. I could choose to not buy it. Yeah, you don't have to buy it. Exactly. Right. So you get to say to yourself, is this fair to me? Mm -hmm. Is this based on my needs and wants? So the last time we had this episode, right? We, we did a sneaker, right? Now, Nike gets to determine the price. Right. So what's, are you into Nikes? Sure. Okay, name name a, a model. The Air Maxes. Air Max. You know, you and I are thinking the same today. Air Max, I was like, I don't know many shoe names, so Air Max. How much does the Air Max go for? Standard, no limit, you know. We'll no say $100. Limitations. 100 bucks. Let's say 99 bucks, okay? Yeah. $99. Now, for some people, they're gonna see this Air Max and say, that is way too much. And for me, I have many options to buy before I get to the Air Max. Mm -hmm. But you, being somewhat of a sneaker aficionado, a thing, you, you like nice things, and so you're like, dude, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. So you get to say that's fair. Something that confuses a lot of creative people is this, is that they think that if they set the price too high, that they're taking advantage of the customer, the buyer. You guys ever feel that way? Raise your hand in the audience. Yeah, okay. So, so here's the thing, would they buy if they didn't see value in this thing? Can I force Ricky through all powers of manipulation? If he doesn't value this thing, would you ever buy no. Ricky? You could say like for me, uh, for some people, like diamonds. Oh, okay. Okay, like diamonds, okay? Like precious stones. Uh, do, you do you believe in those things? No. Me neither, thank God. <laughs> well, we're not getting married, so it's yeah. all right. Okay, so there's a diamond here. We're and for some people, uh, you know, $10,000 for a, uh, an amazing, flawless diamond, beautifully cut, sparkles in the light, that's worth $10,000 to them. For me, it's a rock. It's a shiny rock is what it is. I don't see value in that. So you can't convince me to buy this no matter what you do. No matter how many ads you run on De Beers or whatever, like a diamond is forever. 
So this is the thing. So first of all, you guys need to understand this. When you set the price, the buyer gets to determine if it's valuable to them. And if the perception is, is more value than what they pay, a deal is done, they buy. So when value exceeds price, buyers give you money. So now we understand the difference between cost, price, and value. Cost is the sum total of what it costs to make something. It doesn't include profit. When you add profit, that's your price. The amount of price that you would charge depends on how much profit you have, how much risk you're taking on, how well you can understand what is valuable to the customer. Almost always when a customer comes to me and tells me they need an X, I always ask him, is this a big, important problem that you want to solve? If it's not, let's find one that is big and important because that's what I want to focus on. I want to do something that will have material impact on your business. I want to move the needle for you.